Welcome everybody. It is a beautiful Saturday night. I'm Love Coach Scott G. Thomas, and I'm really excited about what's going to unfold this evening because we've got really exquisite teachers, modern day mystics, who are going to kind of light the way and guide us into how we can dance with the divine. And um, it's really cool because we've got people coming from all over the world. Uh, we're going to have presenters joining us from Egypt and India and, um, of course, the United States, all over the United States. And speaking of all over the United States, you all know the drill. Let us know where you're from. John, who's always the first one with us, Norfolk, Virginia. And I see that we've got uh, Gunam from West Palm Beach, Janet from New York, Jeff, uh, Lynn, Leaf, California, Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Welcome, Eleanor. And, and now there's too many people coming in too fast for me to read it all. But it's beautiful how the awakening world and this show all weekend long, we're reaching more and more and more people all over the world. And tonight's show is really dedicated to getting the word out about a very important book. It is a book on meditation, and it's been put together by Sister Jenna. I was first introduced to Sister Jenna by Kristen Hoffman, and most of you by now, all of our regulars know Kristen because she co-hosts and plays music. I got to tell you, every recommendation Kristen makes is always pristine, whether it's a presenter, whether it's how I can improve um, my sound. Uh, she just has... She's a clear channel for spirit to flow through. And so she said, you know, Scott, Sister Jenna's book is coming out. Do you think you could have Sister Jenna as a co-host do a show kind of dedicated and built around her book? I got excited because I really love who Sister Jenna is. And to my pleasure, she agreed, even though she's in India right now. So with no further ado, I am honored to bring on my co-host for the evening, Sister Jenna, all the way from India. Welcome. Hello, hello, Scott. Om Shanti. And hello, everyone from the Mother Earth Land, Bharat, sweet India. Look, before we all got on today, you have no idea. What do they call it, Scott, in astrology when all the technology stuff goes haywire? Where they go Mercury retrograde. Thank Mercury you very retrograde. much. Mercury's in retrograde. While I'm in studio with all of you now in Mount Abu, India, 5,000 feet above sea levels at the headquarters of the Brahma Kumaris, my beautiful tech technician who has done a million of these Zoom things could not get me on. And so despite that, let me say this, Scott, completely in trust and ease. And here we are today. I can't wait to spend the next um, hour and a half or two with you all as we dig into our experience with the divine and come up better people than when the show started. So thank you, Scott. Thank My you pleasure. so much for doing this. I'm going to bring on, I see that we've got two other people with us, although I'm going to have the primary chat be with you, but you and I have many things in common, but I think the greatest thing we have in common is our mutual love and adoration for Kristen Hoffman. Um, and so Kristen's with us. Um, oh, <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> I love you both so much. You're so easy to love, Kristen. I mean, your mom must be just, I guess maybe she just wakes up every morning just saying, I did it right. I did it oh. right. <laughs> well, my <laughs> mom is actually a heaven mom, but she does, she's there and I always feel her, especially, I have to say, I feel my mom so much every time I'm on the show playing and I'm in my little room here and I tune in, I can feel her energy all around. And we're talking about mysticism and about connection with divine tonight. Every time I play on the show and I feel that connection to my mother's spirit, I'm reminded of the mystery and mm. of wow. the divine mystery that is flowing in all of our lives. Mm. So, you know, there's for something her about, in. oh <laughs> yeah, because there's something about the mystical impact a mother has on you, whether you think she was the best or the worst, as you know, my mama Gita has got dementia that's out the roof. Mm -hmm. So her behavior and animated 
way of being, I look at her and I just count the days that I'm still with her. And I say to God, to Baba, just, just let me savor as much as I can with this spirit because she's taught me so much. So I know how you must feel when you're in the, the zone and, you know, that spirit comes and says, I'm with you, honey, I'm with you. Aww. So I get it. I get it. And your mother is so magnificent. Sister Gita, I've been so blessed to be in her presence on multiple occasions now. And I've even eaten her fav her famous Jamaican <laughs> jerk tofu that one time when I stayed at the meditation museum. And she just brings this life and dance to everything she does. And what a being, what a magnificent being. <laughs> Everyone, just to let you know what Chris is saying is about, about my mama Gita, who was Sister Wadi, who you will see later on, her student. Sister Gita cooked Jamaican jerk tofu and took it to the United Nations to hand it over to Oprah. And Oprah took that Jamaican jerk tofu. Wow. And, wow. So just to give you an idea of my mother, and you know, Reverend Ivy will also tell you she is she is unique to say the least. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, this is a, a, a great opportunity to bring on um, Reverend Ivy is with us as well. Welcome. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good. Welcome to the show. Um, Thank and you. You were on last week. And how wonderful oh. that we get to have you on two weeks in a row. And, you know, and what's ironic to be every let everybody know, ironically, she's going to actually be on again next week, setting a record. First time a new guest has been on three weeks in a row. So because she's that good. She's that special. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> you know, we were honoring uh, mothers and I, uh, I want to take a moment to also acknowledge Kristen's father, who I've gotten a chance to know a little bit, Henry Hoffman. Uh, because no doubt her mother has done an amazing job, both when she was in this world and now up in heaven. But her father also has really done an extraordinary job. And I have a just a special love and appreciation for Henry Hoffman. So I want to acknowledge you too, Henry. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Kristen's mother, for bringing her into this world, uh, because she is truly an angelic blessing for us all. I have to say my father is a big fan of Sister Jenna as well. He <laughs> writes me every time she's on, he sends me a text after, or if I send him one of her videos, he sends me a special text after and he always says, Kristen, she is the real deal. <laughs> Which we know every time you speak Sister Jenna, that feeling, that overwhelming feeling of, yes, the real deal, authenticity and presence yeah. is always with us. and. And so I couldn't agree with him more. I love I'm that. Sure he's because here too. <laughs> I, I love that. And I can't wait to meet your your dad too, because at the beginning, and Sister Wadi will tell you, I was I was forcing myself to be what I think was the epitome of spiritual dignity or power. And so for the first few years, I, I think Henry and all of you would go, Why is she forcing herself to become a saint? Let it be natural. So within like my first two two years or three years, I just had a deep connection and conversation with Baba, with God, who you hear me mention a lot. And I told him I'm not what people are thinking. And Kristen, at that moment, Baba sent a message. You know what? You don't have to be perfect right now. Just be honest and your honesty will lead you to perfection. And so tell dad, that has been my journey. And I think that's why I am you know, like the way that I am, kind of easygoing and yet doing the work quietly behind my eyes. Well, I think that that energy and that approach helps us all to then realize, oh, each one of us is on our own spiritual path and mm -hmm. we can just be present to it. And it's not about being this exalted being. It's about being exactly who you are and getting more comfortable in that space. And I, I'm sure Reverend Ivy would agree with me, maybe. I know that when I started on my musical path, every time I would step on stage, I used to feel also that pressure. Oh, make sure you do it right. Oh, what is, what is it sounding like to everyone? Oh, you just made a mistake. I almost felt like there was this um, expectation peering over my shoulder. 
And I personally had a huge breakthrough one day when I, I kind of heard a voice or we could say it was the divine saying, Kristen, every single time from this day forward, when you step step onto a stage or with a group of people to share music, imagine you're just in your living room, no matter how big that living room is. And we're all sitting around in one big circle and we're sharing who we are. So let it be that, let it be the sharing. It's not a performance, it's a sharing. And I, I'm curious, Ivy, did you have, have you had experiences like that in your path, getting more comfortable with your musical expression? Oh, yes, absolutely. And <laughs> I think of the worst one I ever had. And I, I was taking like inhalers and nebulizers and everything because of the nerves that do come. But then after a while, when you, you do it often, and Sister Jenner is making sure of that, <laughs> so that I can fall into my space, and you are making sure that I'm confident in wherever I step into. So yes, you're absolutely right. It does feel that way. But I also believe if you don't feel that way, then sometimes, hmm, maybe you're not as connected, but you yeah. are going to feel something. And, it, and it's a good thing. It makes it much more powerful, I think. We're more attentive, paying closer attention to each and every day detail. And it takes a lot more than what people think. It's not just, you know, singing a melody. You know, I want to bring this into for all of us that learning how to be a clear channel for spirit to flow through has been a big part of my life's journey. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles in the entertainment industry and I was a very type A personality, get things done with my mind kind of guy. And it has taken a long time for me to really learn to be a clear channel for spirit to flow through. And about 20 years ago, maybe 25 now, that became my mantra. May I be a clear channel for spirit to flow through. And as a coach, there are times that I'll be working and I tend to work Baba sends me the hard cases. Baba sends me people that are dealing with pretty difficult things. And sometimes I'm not sure where to go next and I'll just close my eyes and I'll run the, I'm a clear channel for spirit to flow through silently through my mind. My mouth will open, words will come out. They're not coming from my logical brain. And it almost always is what needed to be heard or said next. So just appreciate all of us learning how to be clear channels for spirit to flow through. And it's, it's obvious when we're listening to someone like Kristen playing that that's what's, what's taking place. Um, and it's obvious too with you, Ivy, and with you, Sister Jenna. But I just want to encourage that everybody watching and listening, we all have that ability to, to cultivate that ability to bring through spirit uh, in beautiful ways. Mm, mm. That's beautifully said. And a wonderful way to do that is through this book. So I want to take a moment to ask Sister Jenna to tell us, tell us about the book. Tell us about your inspiration for it. And uh, you have amazing colleagues joining you. Yes. Tell us all about yeah. it. Uh, I can't take credit. I wish I could. It was really uh, Ariel from Sacred Stories Publishing that approached me to do a book. And she felt that if anyone could support the vision of her common sentient series of, I think it was six or eight books that she's got coming out. The second one was meditation, which was mine. She says, it'll be you. It'll be you who could talk about your intimate experiences with God, with the divine, with Baba. And I just flat out said, no, I just don't have time for that. I'm so sorry. And I'm not interested in doing a book at this time. You see, my life as a yogi with the Brahma Kumaris has been one where there's a very big emphasis on the we culture. And it's not about the person. It's all about we. And so the person takes care of themselves quietly behind the eyes. And based on the development of that, the we culture begins to move forward the story of upliftment for humanity. So when it comes to just personalizing something, it takes a lot of thinking for me, but I have to give credit to Antonia who convinced me to do it. And Ariel came back a second time and said, please, I really, I really want you to do this. I really think this book where you can share your experience with God can help a lot of people. 
And so I said, yes. And that's how it came about, Scott and everyone. It was, it was, a, it was a nudging. Then uh, she urged me. And then Antonia said, please, I think this would be good. And so I gave in. And to have Janai Lane, Sister Veronica, Charlie Hogg, who's the head of the BKs in all of Asia and a seasoned yogi for almost 50 years, to have Jean Houston, my wonderful friend, um, the beautiful Reverend Sylvia Sumter, uh, so many beautiful people that have invested in the book. Um, it's, been, it's been my blessing, actually, Scott. It's been my blessing to be walking on the journey of this book right now. And you know what I've been hearing is people are having mystical experiences after reading the book, Scott. Beautiful, beautiful. So one of the things that's wonderful about the book is it's, and that's really what tonight's show is all about, which is how we can connect to the divine. Um, and uh, I, I wanna acknowledge that, of course, so many of the people watching the show have a practice, have a faith. But I wanna say something to those of you who currently don't have a practice, or maybe you um, went through a disappointment, a disillusionment, and have kind of let go of a practice. Maybe there was a religion that you grew up with that you got disappointed in. Um, but during hard times, what I've observed is that people who have a practice, and the practice can be any number of things. It can be playing a musical instrument. It can be meditation. It can be yoga. It can be a martial art form. There are many forms of a practice. Um, but my friends that have a practice make it, it's easier to make it through the hard times. Mm. Uh, it really is. And I, I'd love to hear what Kristen or Ivy or, of course, Sister Jenna have to say about that. Well, I definitely feel that having a practice has played a really important role in my evolution, both in music, but also in my life as a whole. And my practice is really simple. I realized that committing to an hour of meditation every day and an hour of movement probably isn't going to happen long term if if I make that big of a commitment. So I started small and I think I first started with little tiny bits, but currently my practice is just 15 minutes of meditation and 15 minutes of movement. And that can be anything. It could be free flow dancing. It can be going for a hike. It can be an actual workout. But I do this every morning. And just after that 30 minutes of meditation and movement, I feel ready for whatever may come. And I think that's the key is what can we do so that we have this preparation for whatever may come so that we can show up to each moment, whether it be blissful or whether it be very challenging with like an equanimity about us as much as possible and stay an ability to stay grounded amidst challenge. So for me, the, the, the commitment to a small and doable practice is what has enabled me to have it be long standing. Beautifully stated. Thank That's you. Beautiful. I, I was thinking that was such a wonderful question. And it's not something that um, you think about all of the time. We just uh, sort of do it. And I know when I was 17 years old, I first learned transcendental meditation. And so it started with TM and mantras. And for me, it is breathing, taking that moment in the silence. Um, by, Sister Jenna's trying to get me up at four o'clock in the morning for that experience. <laughs> and every once in a while, it actually happens. <laughs> and that is a wonderful time of the day to connect. But I know that when I get into the water and I mix the water with various types of essential oils and herbs and various things that help to bring feeling of oneness when I get into that water and I take those spiritual baths that's when I start journeying and so that's a practice for me and I have to try this at least twice a day um, in the morning and mostly at night but then sometimes just all during the day 
I am doing some type of a mindfulness, meditative, spiritual practice, and you can feel it. It's like pouring medicine into your cells, into your soul. It gives you energy. And the more that you do it, the more that I do it, the, sh the stronger my emotions become. Wow. Thank you for that. And you know, while I have you right here, Dr. Ivy, real quickly, um, tell us a little bit about your sonic meditation. We'll do this oh again my. for the main show, but now we got our early Zoom rumors. So tell us <laughs> a little bit about this. Well, thank you. Um, this is exactly what we're talking about, being channels and finding a flow. And uh, I have come up with two beautiful young people who actually are pretty um, well known in the uh, I don't know, I guess the R&B and so I don't know what they what, what all they call it, but it's not the kind of music that I used to lis listen to. But I was sitting in the silence and it came to me, what if you put the crystal bowls with sultry rhythms? And so I got into the studio with them and we came up with five meditative journeys. They're each 11 minutes a piece and the main voice, I'm speaking in it, but each one is blended with the crystal bowls. And they're designed with 432, 528 hertz uh, vibrational frequencies for the purpose of brain wave emotional healing. Wow. So you, you sit in it for 10, 15 minutes and actually just short, you mm -hmm. know, the second that it begins, you are now filling your cells with healing energy from the divine. And so this is what that is, frequency of love, because these young men had never done this type of music before. And once they found themselves in that energy, one of them got three movies to produce for. Another one is got a chance to expand his studio because they were vibing and meditating and connecting with the divine in a way that they had never done before. So this is the new medicine for the 21st century, sound vibronics by way of frequency of love. Wow, thank you so much. It's so good to have you with us, really wonderful to have you with us. And it's wonderful to be here. Um, so I'm gonna bring uh, Sister Jenna back on. And Sister Jenna, a couple of things. We've got uh, five minutes left before we start the big show. Um, and I, I am going to pull up where people can get your book. It's easy. Just get it on Amazon. But remember, everybody, hopefully you're buying it through the Global Peace Tribe uh, Unify Amazon account. So I'll, I'll put that up a little bit later today. Um, and Sister Jenna, tell us a little bit more about the book while we're kind of looking at it and hopefully while people are going into Amazon and ordering it. I think it'll help you to come out of the closet of your mystical experiences. I think sometimes we're not so comfortable about things we can't always describe in words because they're bigger than us and they're bigger than the current narrative that's in the world right now. And it's something very personal. I think our mystical experiences is something so personal and sacred that sometimes we wish to protect it. I don't, I don't know if the word is protected, but we wish to, to honor it and to validate it by it staying intimately within me. However, at this particular space and time that we're in, where there seems to be a need for us to guide each other or to be guides for each other and to help each other to get the permission or to be given the permission that it's okay if you've stepped into the awakening of being bigger than what you are. It, it's okay if you're beginning to think that the world that you see with your two eyes is a small world compared to the world of your inner eye, your third eye. And so the book, through all the various stories, because through stories we learn so much about who we really are, just, I'm sure everyone even listening today, this is like the bonus part of Saturday Night Alive with our Global Peace Tribe, with Scott and all of his friends. This is the bonus, the half an hour part is the bonus. I think like your mystical experiences and this book is like a bonus in your already fascinating life. And if we can just be there for each other and guide each other more, 
we won't have all this suffering and stuff that's happening at the borders of you know ukraine and russia and things like that we won't hear archaic choices being being initiated now when we should be moving more into the frequency of love so i think the book is going to remind us that we all come from god the source baba and that we all have a little flame left of our love for god inside of the soul and by reading the book it will help you to enhance your flame of your remembrance and your love for source so I think the book is a little gift to our humanity, Scott. I really do. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, um, as you're talking about people's kind of fear or reticence, maybe that was the word you're looking for, reticence about sharing certain experiences. It is true. I mean, 100 years ago, people were put in insane asylums if they shared a mystical experience that they yeah. had. You know, mm -hmm. and sadly, we still, we might not get put into an insane asylum, but we'll have a family member that might mock us or shame us. <laughs> and um, I'm sure we've all seen little children that still have imaginary friends, you know. And I always, whenever I'm blessed to be with a child that has an imaginary friend, in my opinion, in my reality, that's real. That child is genuinely having an experience, mm -hmm. you know. And the more that we can acknowledge our mystical experiences, and that's, I think, what the book certainly does, and hopefully we'll do tonight. Tonight is a, a night for people to share their mystical experiences, their magical experiences. So all of you in the Zoom room, you're our family. You're our close ones. You're the people mm -hmm. who come every week. So I want to invite you, put in the chat box some of your mystical experiences. You can make it a, a quick sentence or you can write a, a whole story about your connection. Um, you know, because that's how, by sharing together, we make it safe. Yeah. And I need to get us ready to go live on, on Facebook, which takes, it takes me about a minute to pull everything together. So Sister Jenna, we'll be back with you in just a moment. 